Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel's Ocean Cove. Specifically, early details which may indicate what we'll be seeing on the horizon for Intel's next generation of processor architectures. Then we'll move over to AMD as various CPUs are ready for introduction to the mass market. These include various Threadripper 2000 series CPUs as well as plethora of Ryzen processors. And then we'll finish the video off with the PlayStation 5 slash Xbox 2, whatever that ends up being called as TSMC have announced that they are ramping up production of 7NM, specifically citing GPUs and gaming. And given what we know about the next generation of systems from both Sony and Microsoft, this will be a critical component in the production of these next generation consoles. But first things first, Intel and Ocean Cove. So of course, right now, Intel are setting fairly pretty the Coffee Lake range of processors is doing fairly well, that's putting it mildly, but of course they are facing stiff competition now from AMD. Intel have, however, made a rather shocking uh, announcement of late in that they've hired Jim Keller. Jim is legendary in the industry. Not only was he instrumental in the Zen range of processors from AMD, which of course formed the basis of Ryzen slash Threadripper slash Epic slash lots of stuff, but prior to that, he was working on the K7 and K8 Athlons. He also, of course, went to Apple, where he did a stint developing the A4s and the A5s. And perhaps most recent, before, of course, he buggered off to Intel, he was working at Tesla doing, well, Tesla stuff. No one actually really knows, to be honest with you. But anywho, there is a team of, at Intel, a facility, which is located at Hillsborough, which is um, in Oregon, United States, just for your FYI. And there is a job listing there. I'm going to read the job description. If you are passionate about seeing your ideas go from the whiteboard to billions of pieces of silicon, join the Ocean Cove team to deliver Intel's next generation core design at Hillsborough, Oregon. Our goal to build a revolutionary microprocessor core to power the next decade of computing and create experiences we have yet to dream of. We're looking for a micro architecture, logic design and high speed circuitry talent to help us reinvent the core IP. Start the journey with us. I'm not going to read out all of the requirements here because, well, think stuff like strong verbal and written communication and collaboration skills probably don't really tell us that much about the new architecture, but... According to folks over at the Motley Fool, we're going to be seeing Ocean Cove being used in processors that will arrive after Alder Lake. Being realistic, what we do know is that we're going to be seeing Sapphire Rapids, assuming, of course, roadmaps don't change, which is always possible now that uh, Intel are doing such a large shakeup of their portfolio. But Sapphire Rapids is expected to be the 11th generation of core processor family. So... 2020 or later is really the closest we're going to be seeing these processors launch. Ocean Cove, that is, and that even that would be rather impressive. But I think there's a couple of things that we can definitely take from this. Well, of course, we can't discuss core count necessarily with any great sense of accuracy. There are definitely some takeaways, and one of those is that, well, the job listing itself and I'm going to read this out once again, is to reinvent the core IP. So that tells us that there's going to be a large departure from the current established norm. That's not to say necessarily that there haven't been improvements, but, and I'm speaking rather broadly here, of course, there have been changes to the processor pipeline, to cache, and other bits and pieces, of course, and since the uh, core series was first introduced, but if you were to take a look at, let's say, I don't know, Haswell to, let's say, Skylake, there's not really that much that's changed, and even if you were to go from Skylake to KB Lake, it's essentially just a new process, and from KB to Coffee, well, even less has changed. Obviously, we've got a core bump, so it's gone from four to six cores in the mainstream, which means 12 threads as opposed to, you know, eight threads, which is great, and don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining at Intel at all on that, that's fantastic. And of course, we've seen some clock speed bumps and other bits and pieces as well, particularly when it goes to the platform itself, but overall, 
I mean, I'm going to read out a couple of the responsibilities here. Selecting, designing, and delivering a microarchitecture, methodology, or other significant aspects of high-performance CPU core IP design. Analyzing multiple architectures, UARCH and circuit options to find the optimal design point, considering power, performance, area, cost trade-offs, developing a functional block unit RTL model and integrating validating, blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of different stuff, but it looks from the wording, from the verbiage used here, like Intel are going to be doing an entire redesign. And when you think about it, Jim Keller is not necessarily someone you're going to bring in in such a senior position and then just have him do a small tweak. This is not someone who's going to be in there and be like, uh, gee, I think if we just, you know, increase the amount of cash and reduce his latency, you're good to go, Intel. No, no, no. I mean, look what he did with AMD. And I'm not saying that necessarily we're going to see, I don't know, a 40%, 50% IPC improvement, which, of course, is what we saw with Zen compared to the FX range. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a significant bump. And it's also worth noting, and I know some people's eyes glaze over when I say this, but this is not necessarily just going to be part and parcel for us desktop users. I know I've said this in a couple of videos in a row now, but I'm trying to really be, you know, very, just kind of beat it into your heads that Intel are not necessarily happy. They might be slightly perturbed, actually, uh, that the two-in-one market and the ultra-lightweight portable market has started to shift from the x86 and has started to move instead towards ARM. And obviously, I don't need to tell you this, but that's a very lucrative division of the market. And... Being honest, Microsoft are probably not too happy about that either. We've seen how now you can start running x86 code on ARM processors, but that's not necessarily the best way to go for Microsoft either. And obviously, if you start going ARM, there's a lot of other operating systems. It's not the best, so it's really upsetting the old guards. In my opinion, Intel are probably going to want to redesign things from almost like a block-like design, which of course we saw more with like Skylake X where it shifted from the ring bus as we've said before. So it's going to be very interesting to me on how all of this plays out. Um, and obviously 2020, 2021, 2022, whenever this is released, is quite a while into the future. But being honest with you, AMD and Intel are probably good for now. I mean, Zen Plus has just been released this year. We're seeing Zen 2 uh, introduced probably, let's just be honest, around the same time frame next year. So that's 2019. Then apparently uh, AMD have got Zen 3 already in development. Zen 4, it looks like it's MIA, but they're skipping from Zen 4 to, uh, sorry, sorry, from Zen 3 to Zen 5. Now, of course, we're probably going to see some core count bumps there and some other tweaks here and there for in terms of IPC, but essentially, for now anyway, everything's good on Camp AMD, Camp Intel, Coffee Lake is here, uh, we're going to be seeing, at least according to the rumours, the Z390 released later this year with 8-core Coffee Lake, uh, and obviously the X399 platform, and next year, of course, we're going to see the introduction of other CPUs as well, so the next couple of years is going to be very cool. Anyway, next piece of news, and this one is from AMD. This is from official AMD documentation, although it was snagged by videocards.com. And that is that we are seeing AMD's portfolio start to swell. On launch, of course, we did not see certain processes. Like, we didn't see a lot of the Ryzen 3s that we had expected. Um, and some of that is because, of course, we've got the 2200 and 2400, which are now part of the Raven Ridge APUs, but even so, certain parts were certainly missing in action. But now, according to the product um, guide over AMD, it's called the Product Master List, which is literally all of AMD's products, um, there are three distinctive SKUs which have been listed for the Ryzen products. These are the Ryzen 3 2100, the 2300X, and the 2500X. The 2500X, just for clarification's sake, is a 4-core 8-thread. The 2300X is also 4-core 8-thread. The 2100, however, is just two processor cores, but it still does seem to have SMT enabled. Therefore, we're going to have four processor threads total. 
those three processors are indeed for the desktop. We've also got the 2700, sorry, the Ryzen 7 2800U, the 2600U, and the 2000U. Those are, as you can probably imagine, with the suffix at the end, the U, going to be for mobility. So we've got four cores, eight threads, four core, eight threads. And then with the U there, it's just got two cores, four threads. So essentially, the only thing we're missing here is uh, we can already guess what the cache and stuff like that is going to be because it's going to be pretty much identical to the previous processors what we don't have unfortunately are clock speeds so we're going to be seeing pretty much just a replacement of the 1950 the 29 sorry the 1920 and the 1900 so of course this means the uh, 50x the 2950x has 16 cores 32 threads the 29 sorry 2920x has uh, 12 cores, 24 threads, and then finally the 2900X has 8 cores, 16 threads. Naturally, however, this is not just a name replacement. Of course, the Threadripper 2000 series also benefits from some of the other shiny things that we've seen with the introduction of the 2000 series. So, of course, it's going to be built on the 12NM process. Most likely, we're going to see higher clock speeds as well how much higher remains a mystery but i wouldn't be surprised if we see take two to four hundred megahertz there's going to be better ddr support and of course we've all seen how uh, lower latencies are definitely going to be a thing for this generation of zen processors honestly i wouldn't be surprised and i'm saying this without actually testing the 2950x for example but i would not be surprised in any way shape or form if the lower latencies actually benefit the Threadripper series even more than what they do the uh, regular Ryzen series, simply because, rather obviously, you're dealing with more cores, therefore more cache dependent. You know, for example, you've got four CCX modules, but that's just a guesstimate on my part, and I could be totally and utterly wrong there. Finally, let's discuss the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox 2, or whatever it bloody ends up being called. I mean, it really can't be called Xbox 2, can it? Then again, who the hell thought it was going to be called Xbox One, right? Anywho, and beside the point. So, according to a report over at PSU and a couple of other websites have picked up on this as well, there is a major announcement from the Taiwanese Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, and they are starting to produce advanced chips on massive scales. According to the report over at Anantech, I'm going to read this out verbatim, so far we've already favoured out more than 18 customer products with good yields and performance. And this is according to the co-CEO and president at TSMC during a conference call. More than 50 product payouts have been planned by the end of the year from applications across mobile, server, CPU, network, processor, gaming, GPU, PGA, cryptocurrency, automotive, and AI. Uh, 7NM is already in volume production. Now, the reason I find this interesting, and the reason I'm saying that this is most likely PS4, uh, sorry, PS5 slash Xbox 2, whatever the balls is going to be called, is because CPU, sorry, gaming and, and CPU and GPU are essentially listed separately. I'm going to say that one more time. CPU network processor gaming GPU. Obviously, if it was a GPU, whether that was, let's say, for artificial intelligence or whatever it would still be listed under gpu because it's the same sector similarly cpus and all cpu sure they're going to have different specifications but ultimately there is a lot of difference if however we were to say look at 7 ff um, versus 16 ff you're looking at a 60 percent improvement in power 30% improvement in performance and an area reduction of 70%, which is very impressive indeed. So, what of course we don't know right now is what the specifications are going to be. There's a crap ton of rumors, but just speaking more generic terms, just for a second, I think it's fair to say that the next generation of both consoles is most likely going to be using AMD. I don't see any scenario here where it's not going to be there's a couple of reasons i say that pretty much confidently the first is that 
it doesn't make sense for them to switch if they want full backwards compatibility. It just makes things a lot easier. The second reason is that AMD can produce APUs and they're probably going to get a really good price as well. And the third reason is it's just easier for when it comes to optimizations, developers know what they get going in and blah, blah, blah. Plus as well, AMD have probably been very forthcoming with both Microsoft and Sony when it comes to their roadmaps. And the fourth reason, and this one's very bloody obvious, but both companies are kind of sport for choice. Uh, they can go with Zen Plus, which could be maybe redesigned on 7NM, very un very unlikely, given the time frame these systems are going to be released. But it's a very tiny possibility. More likely, however, is going to be Zen 2 or Zen 3. And that on top of a Navi as a GPU. And by golly, bloody gosh, you've got yourself the makings of a really good system. Ultimately, how much of a jump it's going to be, how much of a leap it's going to be, does of course depend on other things, like how much RAM they manage to cram in there. Hopefully, for the, their sake, not ours, Oh, I guess ours as well, since we're going to be paying for the damn systems. We'll see um, RAM prices go down in price. But tentatively, let's say we see 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of memory in those systems. If they're released by, let's say, 2020, it is pretty exciting. I mean, let's just be honest. God of War, the new God of War, of course. Uh, whatever titles on the Xbox are Scorpio, because that just looks amazing. It looks bloody awesome. I mean... I don't like to do graphics comparisons uh, for a news video. I Obviously, we release graphics comparisons occasionally, and I don't want to make this like PC versus Xbox or anything like that. But, uh, in my own personal opinion, I've got a uh, Xbox One X, and I've got a pretty decent PC. I've got a GTX 1080 in my one of my PCs. Uh, and that does me. But, oftentimes, I don't necessarily feel... Like, I'm missing out hugely. I, I definitely know that the PC version of games looks better. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to BS you, but PC games do look better. But still, the Xbox One X still looks pretty darn nice. The main issue I have with the Xbox One X is that a lot of the titles just don't run at 60 FPS, and that's down to the CPU. But in terms of GPU, especially if you put it in visual mode, my god, it looks really nice. Shadow of War, for example, looks bloody good on the Xbox One X. Not quite up to the snuff of the PC version, but still, given that generally speaking, uh, just from my personal setup at the moment, I won't bore you with the details of why, but I've often got my high-end PCs in bits simply because of, you know, video production and reviewing bits. So oftentimes I've got a less capable PC and it does a lot better than that PC, let's put it that way. And so I, I don't feel necessarily like I'm missing out a huge amount from just running something on the Xbox One X quite often. Uh, I do prefer PC gaming, being honest with you, but I am very curious to see what we're going to be seeing with this next generation of systems. I'm very, very, very excited. And of course, this is going to benefit the next generation of PC hardware as well. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.